Thank you for watching Blacksit. Please subscribe to our channel Blacksit. Smash that like button and share everywhere. But I mean, you think about it in Europe, they use nursery rhymes, so why can't in um, Africa they use sing their songs of, of fables? We need to go back to our own and stop adopting European um, culture. Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, oh, come Such on. You know That's mean? why they crash. Yeah, come on. Yeah, let's, let's go back to our own folk and fables and our own griot tales and our own music. I went to the um, Ejaban. Theatre, and I saw a play called uh, um, The Story of the Cora. Yeah, and I, I think it was the Epic of the Cora. And it was a really good play that I saw. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the story behind the Cora was a beautiful, beautiful story. And in some parts, it was really sad, and in some parts, it was, you know, really nice. But it showed the commitment that one had made to spirit to continue in that and the choral was actually a gift from spirit and so I was really nice it was really nice to see the cultural aspect Wonderful. Of, of of Gambia of Africa through the through culture. through through, through the, the culture and through the yeah through the drama and through the choral and the music was beautiful yeah. throughout the whole play. I really loved it and it gave me even you know um, even more, you know, in understanding of the instrument and the playing of the music, because it wasn't something that I was totally familiar with, other than listening to like um, Sonia Jabati, I think her name is. Sonia, yeah. Yeah, Sonia. Yeah. yeah, and listening to her music. That's how I first became familiar um, with with the um, with the um, chora, yeah. actually. Um, other than when I was here on holiday and, and hearing it played. Mm -hmm. So, and even that you don't hear as much as you used to. Yeah. When I was here in 2011, you used to hear more people playing on the beach or on the side of the road. Yes. You more, mean, than, more than you do now, yes. which is, you know, a real shame. Yeah. And I think it's time to revive that culture and, um, you know, have the traditional instruments as well. Very important. So um, I'm going to kind of wind up, um, but I want to talk a little bit about, obviously, um, you know, some of the stories, if you could tell us just briefly, uh, one of the stories that people would know about in this, that people would be able to read about in this book, because yes. not everybody would be able to get this book. In fact, well, how can anybody get this book? How can everybody get this book? Oh, I have uh, two outlets, one at the, the Timbuktu, the very famous uh, and best uh, bookshop, we may say, in the Gambia. Is that black owned? Yes, it's owned by, the, by a Gambian called Oz Jain, Usman Jain. Usman Jain. Yes, uh, at the Bacow Newtown. Bacow Newtown. Yes. As long as it's black owned, I only do black owned. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you, we have the National Museum as well. But uh, because Usman has been uh, my main distributor for a very long time, and we knew, knew each other for a long time, and uh, he's an honest guy, that's why I call this uh, uh, enterprise Ndabli. 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 What is Ndabli? Look at it here. Okay. Ndabli. We're going to learn about a new word today. It, 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 it's a word of word. But, which has a lot I'm going to tell Vital off. Vital never taught me this word. Vital has been teaching me one off. Mm, doubly. What do you see there? Black family. And um, what? Children. What, what, do you, what do you think they are doing? Eating together. Thank you. The best of all, the values, the moral values that we learn around this big family eating bowl is very capital and that is where everything starts. If we talk about learning our cultural values and knowing who we are and where we're going to, you know, that all our values begin at the family unit, then it is because we are tolerant, we are honest, we are disciplined, we are kind, we are brave, we are considerate, you name it. Around the eating bowl, each child has to hold the tip of the basin with the left hand and then eat with, 
your head down, eat as much as you can and in a very nice manner and you don't have to look at the person eating of on the right or the left, whether he's a stranger, whether he's ugly, whether he's dirty, whether he's part of the family or whether he's elderly or whether he's taking everything, no. We are the epitome of beauty and they are giving themselves skin cancer, they're giving themselves alopecia, they're losing their hair, they're wearing wigs, they're wearing false eyelashes, for false nails, they're, they're faking out. They're faking out to such a degree that they don't even want their own complexion anymore. And you know, this is like heartbreaking for me. And this is why we need folks and fables and tales about us and about our image and about who we represent. Golo the beautiful monkey. Have yeah? You, have you ever seen the beautiful monkey? Yeah, I've been to Monkey Park and I even have them jump on my wall right here where I live. This pertains to what you are just saying. So this it, is the story. Yes. Share this story now, because I asked you to share at least one story. So this is the story yes. that we're going to talk about, because ancestors have guided us this way, I'm guessing. Yeah. Golo, the beautiful monkey. Mm -hmm. Here is a tale. We are listening. Once upon a time, and it usually takes place. Marta. There was Gola the monkey. After the Almighty had created all the animals, Gola happened to be the most beautiful. Her eyes were big, blue, and bright. Her nose was pointed. Her cheeks were full and round, and her lips were fresh, fleshy, and smooth. Her ears were small. Whenever Gola strolled around the village, she would shake her fat buttocks up and down and wag her tail, which was fairly long and very hairy. Any male animal that saw Gola fell at once in love with her. Any female animal that saw Gola looked at herself again and again. One day, Gola was taking a walk as usual. On the way, she came across Mbotta, the toad, and Tan, the vulture. When these two companions saw Gola, they burst out in laughter. They laughed and laughed and laughed so much at her. In the end, Gola became very angry. So she turned around and asked them, Why are you laughing at me? Am I smeared with excrement or do I smell foul? Mbota and Toad replied, Indeed, you are neither smeared nor foul with excrement, only that you look very much funny. Mbota and Tan kept on laughing until their stomach ached. As Gola could not bear it any longer, she shrieked at them. I'm afraid you have lost your senses. You laugh, you laugh as if you were bitten by a wall gecko. Gola sucked her teeth furiously at them and walked away. Further down the road, she came across Mbam Allah, the bush hog. As soon as she saw Golo, she guffled and guffled until she choked. When she looked up, she saw Golo sneering at her. Golo was worried. She looked at herself all over before asking Bam Allah, My friend, what is funny? Why are you laughing at me? Instead of replying to Golo, Mbam Ala grunted and grunted and grunted with laughter until tears rolled down her cheeks. Alas, she said to Gola, Please, my friend, go to the river and take a look at yourself on the water. I can't really tell you. Gola was now confused. She didn't know what to do. She became scared. When she arrived at the end of the road, 
she met Lady the Hippo. Gollum called her aside and asked her softly, Please, my sister Lady, how do I look? The latter murmured to her, Truly, it is high time you change your physical features. Your head is too big. Your eyes are bulging and your nose is too pointed. Your buttocks are too fat and your tail is too short and hairy. As for your ears, <laughs> they look like holes in your head. I have never seen such in my life. With her eyes wide open, Golo asked Labir gently again, Is this why I am the laughing stock of the village? Labir whispered once more to Golo, Suddenly, try by all means to change them. You look very hideous. I tell you this because I am your friend. There is a wall of proverb which says, Only your admirer will tell you to take a bath. Lebe giggled and giggled and giggled until she fainted. When she saw this, Gola became frightened and terribly displeased with the Almighty. For that matter, she went to see him. When Gola arrived in paradise, she said to the Almighty, Oh, great one, I thought I was the most beautiful creature in the world. But now, everybody is laughing at me. Wherever I pass by, others say that I am too ugly. The Almighty asked Golo, Now, what do you want, my humble creature? Golo replied, I want you to make my head and eyes smaller. They are too big. My ears are too small and my nose is too pointed. My neighbors also say my lips are too thick, that my buttocks are too fat and my tail too short and hairy. The Almighty asked Golo, Is that all? Golo replied as she sobbed and sniffed. <laughs> yes, great one. I want to be very much prettier than I look now. And so, the Almighty said to Golo, Then, have all that you wish for yourself. Let it be so. At once, Golo's head grew smaller and looked like a small coconut. Her eyes were reduced to the size of a cowrie shell. Her ears grew thinner and curved like cockle shells, and her nose was smashed. Her fleshy lips became very thin and sucked in. Her big and fat buttocks became flat and bald like the skin of a dimble fruit. Her tail grew thinner, longer, and lost all the fine hair on it. Gola looked at herself and felt happy and satisfied. She thanked the Almighty and returned proudly to the village. However, wherever Gola passed, everybody burst out again in laughter. This time, they laughed more than ever. Some laughed until they collapsed and some laughed until they dropped down dead. Gola could not bear it any longer. This time, she did not ask any question. Instead, she ran away and clambered up a tall tree in the forest. And so, the story also ran and hid in the forest. The first nose to sniff it shall look like Gola, the beautiful monkey. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> so what's the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the question that's behind that story? And if you sniff it, that means you are understanding it. Okay, so let's sniff. Yes. Now, what I questions? will bring some little questions. Mm -hmm. Why did all the female animals laugh at Gola? All these animals that I've been naming here, 
who are ugly, very ugly looking. Oh. Although, although when we come to uh, creativity, we will say all animals are beautiful. It's just the way that the Almighty has created you. Mm -hmm. So, as we said and saw, Golo seemed to be the most beautiful, beautiful animal. Yes. So they were jealous and they laughed at her. And they laughed okay. at her. So we are talking about the uh, stuff, jealousy. Jealousy is dangerous. Of one nation, one Africa. Thank you, Black Sit family. Please keep watching, please subscribing, and remember, follow your dreams. Purchase your tracks today. Purchase your tracks today.